The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 78 of your distance learning session for Geology Opposite Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During lesson 77, we had an assignment. We shall now proceed to correct the assignment. We had these two photos, photograph A and B. And we were to observe the photos and answer the following questions. Using the photographs A and B above, identify with reasons the features most likely represented. If we get back to those uh, photos, you will realize that this is a photograph where you have bending and twisting distracted along a certain plane. Here you also have a material that has been laid down and the way they are laid down is in terms if is in layers and is regular. So there is no there are no irregularities along the surface as the materials were laid down. So with respect to that, photograph A therefore is a drag fold. How do we know that is a drag fold? There is bending and twisting of rocks along a what? A fracture surface. So here you see two structures overlapping. You have a fold and you also have a what? A fracture. So if you interpreted it as a fracture, it is okay. If you interpreted it as a fold, it is okay. If you overlap the two, it is still okay. Now, photograph B is layering. Why? Because you have surface or surfaces separating conformable beds. You saw a layer line after each layer. And it means that you see there are between each layer there is a contact. So they are conforming with no distractions. Now we are still under the subtopic photo uh, photograph interpretation. We saw identification of geological photos and we are now going to proceed to description of geological photographs. <laughs> Our lesson 78, therefore, is titled Description of Geological Photographs. We are going to look at the objectives. We have some prerequisites, real life situation. We will have some learning activities. And then we will have some exercises to answer. And we will end our lesson with an assignment. Now, as we look at description of geological photographs, we will be, at the end of this lesson, be able to state steps for describing uh, features in geological photographs. Now, we will use those steps to now describe a geological, uh, to describe a geologic feature on a photograph. Now, note should be taken that in order to Describe geological photographs. We need knowledge of denudational geology. We also require the knowledge of petrology, that is, the different rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphics. We need the knowledge on structural geology, 
historical geology, and also the knowledge of map work. Now, take a look at those photographs. You have photograph A, which is a beach, photograph B, which is a fracture with a visible displacement. You have photograph C, which is layering or sedimentation or uh, stratification. You have photograph D, which is an unconformity. This is a zone where the, uh, there is uh, uh, where there is there are irregularities. So we call that a plane of unconformity. Now, a geologist collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential feature. Now, which method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities? If we use histograms as well as cumulative frequency curves, can it reveal that relationship between the rocks and the structures? What about stereograms? Or better still, geological maps or photos? As we go through our lesson, we will see which of these methods is possible to reveal that relationship between the rocks and the structures. Now, we are in part B of our lesson on the photo interpretation in geology. Now, those photos help us to be able to understand that there is a criteria you will use in order to identify as well as describe whatever photo is or whatever feature is represented in a geological photo. So, look at the steps for describing geological photographs. The first step, you study the photo, the photograph, looking at the main structures that are exposed. The first thing, you study the photograph. And in studying a photograph, you need to orient it, take note of the scale. That is why we say map work. During uh, 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 a lesson on scales on maps, we say that there are object scales, and object scales are most likely used in the field when we are taking geological photos. So you orient the photo so that you put it on the reading position with respect to the scale. Now, identify the feature given a reason. Then the next step, you draw an annotated diagram of the structure identified. Then the next thing, you describe and state the mode of formation. Lay emphasis on your own point of view because it is a photo. You must lay emphasis based on what you are saying the photo represents from your own point of view, but making sure that you are bringing in geology. Then propose a geological or a tectonic setting of the photo. You are only proposing because you are dealing with a photo. Now, example one, identify and interpret the photo provided. This photo, if you look at the photo, you will realize that there is bending. There is bending and there is also twisting. So, first thing, the photo represents folding due to the fact that there is bending and twisting. Secondly, folding is brought about by what? Compressional forces. So we believe that the bending and twisting would have been as a result of compressional forces. Then, folding will most likely occur where you have plates moving towards each other. So the tectonic setting is what? Along destructive plate margins. Then, this is the illustrative way of drawing this photo. You must be very, very, very logical because the way you draw the diagram must be revealing. That is what we talk of being diagnostic and 
putting uh, 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 labels that will help you to reveal what the photo is all about. Then you have arrow here, you have another arrow here. Even when you see arrows on either side, is indication of what? Compressional forces. Then here you could still label the crest, and here you label the trough. Or you label upfold and downfold. Those are the essential elements. You could also label the limbs or the full sides. Those are possible uh, labels that can help reveal what you have identified. Then next, example two. Identify and interpret the photograph provided. We look at this photograph, we say you should always orient it. Study it and orient it in the reading position. If you look at the, 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 the hammer on the photo, that is our scale. Remember that the hammer where you hit is the position of the knot. The portion that you use in hitting is the position of the knot. So this is the photo in reading position. Then you can see swell and you can also see pinch. So therefore, that photo represents boudination. Why? Due to pinching and swelling structures. Now, how is this formed? It's formed by tensional forces. Not should be taken here that if we just get to the diagram where there is swelling, you see that there is swelling here, there is swelling. Now, if there is tension in between two swells, then that tension, the, the swelling should experience compression. So that is why we can say that it is a joint action of tensional and compressional forces. That is on fuel basis. We have insist on the fact that for you to conclude that a feature is boudinage, you must be certain that there is intercalation of competent and incompetent beds. But in this case, we are seeing just a rock mass which is competent. So we conclude on boudination. Then, they occur during intense conditions of what? Metamorphism. Then, example three. Identify and interpret the photograph provided. Now, if you look at this photograph, again, you realize that this is uh, a structure which looks like a fracture that has been refilled. And then you realize that this is another structure that looks like a fracture that has been refilled. Then you realize that one of the structures is displacing on the other. So, there is visible displacement. And when there is visible displacement, is what? Faulting. We don't bother to know which type of faulting. But when you are in the field, if you are watching at horizontal displacement, it should be on the floor of the rock body. Then vertical displacement should be on the wall of the rock body. Then they are most likely formed by what? Tensional forces. Here is relative. If you concluded on horizontal displacement, then you know that horizontal displacement are driven by shear forces. While uh, vertical displacement are driven by uh, tensional forces. And there are also uh, this, uh, visible displacement that are caused by compressional forces. But here we are talking on faulting in general. So we can establish tensional forces as well as shear forces. Then they occur during rock deformation with stress strain effect. That is our diagram. In this diagram, we have the what? The old the, 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 the older displaced vein. And then here we have the young, this is the young displacing vein. This is the vein that has been displaced. Uh, the, this is the vein that has been displaced. And then this is the vein that is displacing. That is why along we have the arrows indicating the movement. Then example four, identify and interpret the photo, the photo provided. In this photo, you realize that this is a structure that is lying discordantly. And then somewhere here, there is a, a bend and then a continuous. So, that is a structure lying discordantly and most obviously cutting across. 
So that kind of structure can you have a seal that is uh, uh, the follow rock uh, contacts and a dike that is the straight outcrop which cuts across other beds. If you get to our diagram, you will realize that here this is where we have a, uh, a seal because it's lying, it is lying concordantly. This is concordant, and then here you realize that it is a die because it cuts now across before continuing. So you have a seal and a dike represented by the same structure. Then they are formed from what? Moderate cooling and what? Solidification of magma at shallow depth, especially in what? In rock fractures or in fissures. Then they occur as what? Minor intrusion. Photograph 5 or example 5. Identify and interpret the photo provided. Realize that these are columns. If you look at the, the scale, these are columns. You can be able to visualize a site, a site and you can see different uh, rock pillars. So, that photo is what? Columnar joints due to what? A set of joints with what polygonal shapes means that you can measure the size. So they are formed by what they are formed during cooling of lava in a number of cooling directions or cooling centers, which develop within the what the lava. So it occurs as what lava flow. Then example six, interpret and. Uh, identify and interpret the photograph provided. So here you have again rock masses standing on each other. So most likely with uh, horizontal joints or horizontal fractures. So that is a top. Why? Due to the heel top masses of weathered joints, uh, weathered joint uh, blocks. How are they formed? They are formed from exfoliation uh, parallel to what? Uh, exfoliation parallel to sheet joints. And they occur as what? Denudational features because they are features related to weathering. This is the diagram. In this diagram, you realize that this is down slope and you have regolith. That is material that has been, that has moved downhill. And then you have uh, now the tors, which are blocks of rock standing on each other. Then you have now the joints. Example seven: Identify and interpret the photo. The photo provided. Now, if you look at this photo, you will realize that there is a plunge. There is water plunging, and the water is plunging on materials and has a plunge pool. So when we have water plunging with a plunge pool, we can most likely conclude that it is a water fall. So waterfall due to the sharp break in the river channel, causing what? Water to plunge vertically into a plunge pool. So we have, it is formed by what? River erosion, or it is a river erosional feature. This is also related to uh, denudation. You look at the diagram, you will realize that this is the lip of the waterfall. The lip of the waterfall, and then this is the tongue. Remember, we said that the lip is what? The material on which the, 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 the water is plunging, and then the tongue is the plunging water, and then you have the plunge pole. Then these are the materials, and you realize that the materials are inter. They are uh, layered. Example 8. Identify and interpret the photo provided. If you look at this photo, you will realize that this is a scar. And on that scar, you have material that is done. We can say this is the foot. And on the foot, you have dumped material. This dumped material could be screws and talus. So when we have a scar and the foot of material dumped, we conclude on landslide. So it is a landslide. The photo represents a landslide. Why? 
due to the downhill movement of materials with a scar and foot mass of debris. What may be a likely cause of this? It is caused by what? Slope failure of inhomogeneous material with what? Planes of weaknesses. And most likely, the, it, it is very common in steep slopes as well as during earthquakes prone areas. Example 9. Identify and interpret the photo provided. This is a photo. If you look at this photo, you could conclude on bending and twisting of materials. But again, you realize that there are some irregularities and the material at the top is not training or is not outcropping the same way like the material below. So we realize that there is a plane where they are not conforming. So that most likely should be an on conformity. So the photo represents an on conformity due to the surface separating unconformable beds. If you completed unfolding, unfolding, you are still correct. On layering, you are still correct. You just need to justify your answer and what you are visualizing or bringing out as a feature from the photo. Now, uh, unconformities are formed during marine transgression and they occur as stratigraphic contacts. That is the diagram. So here, we are supposed to label the plane of unconformity because this is where the materials are not conforming or they are, there are the surfaces of irregularities. Now, recall that to interpret geological photographs on map, on photos, the first thing, identify the feature giving a reason. Secondly, you draw an annotated diagram. And then thirdly, you describe and you state the mode of formation. And fourthly, you propose a geological or a tectonic setting for the feature identified. Now, it is but obvious that photographs will best reveal the relationship between rocks and structures. So, we adopt the third method. Therefore, we are saying that um, stereograms, histograms, and cumulative frequency curves cannot reveal the relationship between uh, rocks and structures. They may, but they will not do it as easy as photos and maps will do. So, in our assignment, we have uh, some no, we have some exercises, and the exercise concerns this photo. Now you observe, you realize that it is a photo where a dark bed is bending and it is twisting from the position of the uh, of the geologic hammer. So, question number one. The, the mature feature shown on the photograph above is most likely to be, that is, the mature feature. It could also be the main feature or the major feature shown on the photograph above is most likely to be A, jointing, B, veins, C, folding, D, faulting. A correct answer is C. It is folding because there is bending and twisting. Then, question number two. The diagnostic char uh, characteristic for identifying the feature, the photograph, uh, the feature shown by the photograph above is most likely to be A, bending and twisting of bed. B, Breaking and displacement. C. Cross cutting of structures. D. Conformable beds. Our correct answer is A. The best way to identify folds, both in the photo and in the field, is basing attention on bedding and twisting of beds. State the mode of formation of the feature identified on the photograph above. A. Formed by tensional forces. B. 
formed by compressional forces. C, formed by shear forces. And then D, formed by fractional, frictional forces. Our correct answer is B. It is formed by bending and twisting is related to compressional forces. Then the next question, state the tectonic setting of the feature identified on the photograph above. A. Constructive plate margins. B. Transform zones. C. Accretion center. D. Destructive plate margins. Our correct answer is D. Destructive plate margins because there are cases where plates are moving towards each other. So they will most likely be driven by compressional forces. Now, we look at our assignment. Again, photograph A and B, which we had seen before. What are you going to do with this photograph A and B at home? You are going to use photographs A and B to... Uh, what are you going to do with it? The first thing, you will identify the major features uh, uh, giving reasons. And then you will draw and an, uh, you will draw annotated diagrams of the structures identified. Then you describe the structure and the mode of formation. Then you propose a geological setting. You can use geology for advanced level. This way it will guide you on how to identify and describe features on a photo. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on revision and integration activity 3. See you in our next lesson. Unna tege si ma tege yop Unna tege minga ma tege nyum Unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana ma tege mot Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Yeso kina bia jinki do Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.